Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I want to play around and attempt a glazing technique. We are going to be dyeing this 100 grams of sock yarn in two different steps. First, we are going to dye it some bright colors. Second, we are going to over dye it with some black dye and attempt to get this glazed effect. Now, I believe that the theory is that when you're doing the second dye job, you should have high heat, so already a hot bath, and high acid content, so the color strikes really, really, really fast. We are going to give this a shot and see how it goes for our first attempt. The Chroma Twist Based is 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon. For dyes, today we are going to use some 1% stock solutions of Jacquard Acid Dyes in Jet Black, Yellow, and Pink. I am bad at adding extra ties around a skein of yarn, but when I discovered that the Chroma Twist only came with one, I added a couple of crochet cotton ties to it. My dye bath is already warm from another dyeing project, but this was just plain water that I used to steam with. I am going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar to the dye bath and stir it up. I have not pre-soaked the yarn, but I did sort of pre-wet it, so that way I would have a slightly easier time adding it to the pot. Well, and that is still warm. <laughs> Normally it's best if things are cool, but um, I am now going to slowly submerge <laughs> this yarn and I guess we are sort of pre-soaking in this pot. I don't care about there being some uneven absorption of color for this first stage of dyeing, um, which is why I was okay adding the yarn dry, um, just because I like dyeing doing some kettle dyeing of dry yarn because I like the the different ways the colors form. But <laughs> I do want my yarn to be in the water for when I add the dye, so <laughs> that's why these slotted utensils can come in handy. The dye bath is warm. I am going to reduce the temperature. And now we are going to add our dye. So my plan is to add a third of a cup of two different 1% stock solutions. And so this is about 80 milliliters of dye. So to one side, I'm going to add a third of a cup of the pink. Quickly rinse my cup out. stir up my yellow dye stock and to the other side we are going to add a third of a cup of the yellow. And now that I have added both of these to the pot, I am going to take my slotted device and sort of move things around a little bit so that way more of the fibers can access these colors, even if that mixes up our pink and yellow a bit. Um, otherwise, we could end up with really bright colors in just some little sections. But actually, I think I might want a little more pink because that struck pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and once again rinsing out my cup, or my measuring cup. I'm going to add another third of a cup of pink to our pot. And this time I can sort of get to it a bit faster to get more of that pink color on that side of the yarn. So now I'm going to let this sit until all of the color has absorbed and then we will 
uh, come back and talk about the next step. 10 minutes have passed and let's see what we've got in terms of color absorption. So it looks like all of our pinks have absorbed, but we still have, I guess it's hard to see on camera. There is still some yellow that is left in the pot. Um, part of that could be could be due to the fact that the the yellow tends to crash out of solution in the dye stock, so therefore maybe um, it could stick around a tiny bit. But let's just go ahead and give this another 10 minutes and then we'll check back in. After a total of 20 minutes, there is still a hint of yellow in the dye bath. But I am now going to remove the yarn and we'll see what is really left. Trying to get a good grip on it with my tongs, placing it into a dedicated dye dish. And yes, there is still some yellow left behind, but almost all of the color is in fact in the yarn. Here is our yarn, which is still quite hot. We have some really bright yellow, bright pink, and a tiny bit of orange where they mixed together. And now we are gonna attempt to glaze this bright yarn with some black to kind of make these feel like really deep and dark. We'll see if this works, but I'm gonna try to get that dye bath going as fast as possible. In my dye pot, I now have 12 cups of water. And I am going to add two thirds of a cup. Oh, almost, I need a little more. <laughs> okay, I am adding two thirds of a cup of white vinegar, which is about 10 tablespoons. The reason why I'm adding so much vinegar is I want our dye to strike really, really quickly. So we're gonna have a hot dye bath with a lot of vinegar, to which I'm gonna add our black acid dye. And there is still acid in the yarn itself. Um, the yarn will probably still be somewhat warm when this all heats up. So I th hopefully with all of this, the dye should strike really, really quickly. Um, and the reason why I'm using a large volume of water is so that way the Hopefully the dye will strike quickly, but we can get it sort of all over the yarn. But we'll see <laughs> how this how this works. Um, and now I am going to add a third of a cup of Jacquard Black to our dye pot. And you can see that that is really, really, really dark looking. <laughs> but hopefully this will give us a nice all of our color and we will still be able to see some hint of the yellow and pink beneath the surface. We are now boiling and notice this film on the surface. I'm not sure if that is some dye crashing out or what, but I am just going to roll with it as best I can. Okay, our the, our brightly colored yarn is um, still warm and full of liquid, but I'm now going to quickly add this to the pot. Deep breath, because this yarn is so pretty on its own that I'm a little sad to put it in and nervous that we're just gonna have black yarn and not see much of anything else. <laughs> Maybe I used too much black, but I'm going to reduce the heat. But we will find out. Oh, that'll be a shame. Um, oh, there's a lot of black in here. And, okay, I am not going to let this sit and let wait for the dye bath to clear. Because, and here's why. There is... <laughs> All right, a lot of color is already on the yarn, and I am now gonna let this cool. Now, I sort of dunked this and removed this, not super, super fast. I could have done that faster. And it's possible 
that some of this black will rinse out, some of it might not. But this is actually pretty cool because now that I'm looking here through the, through sort of the steam that's coming up, I can definitely, definitely still see yellow and pink in here behind the black. So, but I know that if I had left it in the pot that um, probably it would have become black <laughs> or black-ish overall. I'm going to let this cool and then we will rinse it and see. But maybe, maybe the technique is not to add and let all the black dye exhaust, but to quickly dip it into black and remove it so you get a little bit of dye to strike on the surface because maybe if you leave it in the pot, you'll get too much. So what I don't know is if this little amount of heat is enough, if I would need to steam it some more. Whatever the case, I am gonna let this cool and then we will wash this as is. But I have a feeling that this is something that I will ex be exploring a lot more in the future. Let's wash our yarn. Now I am expecting to absolutely see some color come out here. I am expecting to see some color come out, mainly because, well, since we added this to the to the pot while um, and removed it quickly, there wasn't necessarily a ton of heat. But all things considered, it's not very much color coming out. So maybe, and this is where like. Sometimes I try to do something with only having heard a little bit about it, just to see how it works. But I think that maybe the answer is just sort of getting this glaze, which, you know, in some places it's really dark, almost black. And then in other places we see the reds or the pinks and the yellows come through a bit. I think the answer might be to do a really fast dunk into the black and not really let it sit there for a little while at all. Um, everything looks darker now because everything is still wet, but I'm really curious to see what these colors will look like when the yarn is dry. I am going to add a little bit of clear soap to help this lodge excess dye, but I'm really, really intrigued by this. We did have a ton of acid in our dye bath for this black dye. And so that means that the dye could strike really quickly, but we see I'm now rinsing some of this yellow out. Um, from the first round, and we didn't wash in between, from the first round there was some yellow that stayed behind, and now we are rinsing some of that out now. Um, in theory, I suppose, I wonder what a difference it would make if you washed the yarn in between, versus having the yarn still be acidic. There's a lot of ways that you can play around with this, but I think that it has fantastic potential. I am going to keep rinsing this yarn until the water runs clear, um, which might take a little while because of this yellow. <laughs> but then we will hang the yarn to dry and come show you guys the finished dried yarn. The finished dried yarn is amazing. I can't believe that I was terrified that we were going to end up with just a pure black yarn and lose all traces of the color underneath when I was doing the glazing step. It is hard to believe that this yarn started off with bright pink and yellow, but there's still a tiny hint of some of the original pink and yellow underneath our black glaze, but overall we now have these muted purple and almost green feeling sections to this yarn. Since there was a lot of acid in the pot, the black acid dye struck fast to the yarn, which gave us this light level of coverage so we could still see the original colors through the dye job. Even in some of the sections where we got the most black, you can still see the underlying purple and pink. I don't think that these colors would show through in this way if we had mixed the yellow with black and the pink with black ahead of time. I think that the over dyeing step is critical to get this effect of the color. 
I think that it would be possible to say dye a bunch of yarns for the first step and then have one pot of black dye that you could dip all of them quickly into to get the glazed effect. Um, I think that the proportions of acid and dye that I had in the pot worked really, really nicely for this yarn. And I would like to experiment with leaving yarn in the, in the black for various amount of times. So maybe this is something that I'll need to do with some mini skeins in the future. I cannot wait to explore this technique using a number of different colors for the over dyeing and different colors for the base. I think that this gives me a whole new way to add dimension to my yarn and to my colors. And I really cannot wait to explore it further. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. If you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, you should check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. Happy dyeing!